Hi, today's video involves limits as x approaches infinity and horizontal asymptotes. Um, we will see the tie-in, actually let me do that right now, a function f of x or y equals f of x. as a horizontal asymptote, which I will abbreviate h dot a dot. Of y equals l, horizontal line, if the limit as x approaches infinity of f of x is equal to l or the limit as x approaches negative infinity of f of x is equal to l. So again, limits as we approach infinity and how we define horizontal asymptotes are related to each other. Similar to limits, the, uh, infinite limits and vertical asymptotes. Okay. So let's uh, look at some examples. First, let's consider the limit as x approaches infinity of x minus the square root of x squared plus x minus 7. Now, as x approaches infinity, Obviously, x is approaches infinity, and my second term, the square root part, is also approaching infinity. This is approaching infinity minus infinity. This is another indeterminate form. In this form, I cannot tell what's happening. This is, think of this like a tug of war. The first part wants to pull this function to positive infinity. The second part wants to pull the function to negative infinity. They are literally pulling themselves apart. And what often happens is that they end up in a stalemate and the value for the limit is some real number. Um, but, as before, when we deal with indeterminate limits, we have to do something to figure out what those values are. So we need to do some algebra. So in this case, the limit as x approaches infinity, I will, again, since I have the difference with the radical in there, square root, the thing that this kind of screams that we might want to try is to multiply by the conjugate. x plus the square root of x squared plus x minus 7. I can't just multiply by something randomly. I do not want to change my values, so therefore I have to multiply numerator and denominator. Okay, now I am multiplying by 1. It is now the limit of this whole thing. Multiplying by 1 does not change the end result. I can't just multiply the numerator by that conjugate. I would change the value. So this then becomes limit as x approaches infinity of x squared minus the quantity. Again, the difference of two squares. x squared plus x minus 7 over this denominator. Or then we get the limit as x approaches infinity of negative x plus 7 over x plus square root of x squared plus x minus 7. Now, let's, we've done some algebra. Let's see where we are. As x approaches infinity, my numerator is approaching an infinity, negative infinity in this case, but my denominator, both of these are approaching a positive infinity. That is not indeterminate. That is approaching a positive infinity. 
This is another indeterminate form. Remember I said there were a few different indeterminate forms. There are actually seven of them. Um, so far, this is now the third indeterminate form that you've seen. We had previously the approaching zero over zero indeterminate form. We now have seen the infinity minus infinity indeterminate form and the infinity over infinity indeterminate form. It doesn't matter if they're positive infinity or negative infinity, whatever infinity we're approaching, anything infinity over infinity form is indeterminate. Anything can happen. So, um, I guess I need my board, so I'm going to erase this. This is another indeterminate form, and we have to be able to deal with that. To deal with this, we need a different kind of algebra. What I am going to do is I am going to multiply by, and I will, let me rewrite my original problem here, or where we were. And in this case, I'm going to multiply by 1 in the form of 1 over x over 1 over x. We multiply by the largest power of x that occurs in the denominator, in any of my terms. And uh, basically, this is x to the first, and this is basically x to the first also, the square root of x squared. When I do that, this then becomes limit as x approaches infinity, negative 1 plus 7 over x. My denominator becomes 1 plus the square root of. When I distribute the 1 over x to the inside of the radical, it becomes a 1 over x squared on the inside. And I will go ahead and write that. Put in this step. And so then this becomes, limit as x approaches infinity, negative 1 plus 7 over x. And my denominator becomes 1 plus the square root of 1 plus 1 over x minus 7 over x squared. Now, as x goes to infinity, each of these end up approaching 0 because my numerator is a fixed number, my denominator gets larger and larger, therefore this ends up being negative one-half. And that is the value for the limit. In basic rules that we follow, you uh, always make sure if you're going to multiply by something, you multiply by one. And when we are dealing with the infinity over infinity form, multiply by one over the largest power of x in the denominator. Okay, now that's my first problem. I want to do a couple more here. The second problem is really simple. I just want to remind you or to show you. Let's suppose that I had the limit as x approaches infinity of x plus the square root of x squared minus x plus 7 or x squared plus x minus 7. Sorry, let me do the same thing I did before. Now, in this case, this is not indeterminate because the first part is approaching positive infinity. The second part is approaching positive infinity. Now, rather than being a tug of war, they are working together, and so we would just say this result is positive infinity. It is not indeterminate. Okay. Third problem that I want to do is uh, problem 2b from the uh, worked out problems that it, you have this section and it is to find all the horizontal asymptotes 
for y equals the square root of 2x squared minus 7 over x minus 8. Now to find horizontal asymptotes, as I mentioned before, we need to know what happens as x approaches positive infinity and x approaches negative infinity. So we will consider both of them. Limit as x approaches positive infinity of square root of 2x squared minus 7 over x minus 8. Largest power of x in the denominator is x to the first. So I will multiply by 1 over x over 1 over x. This then becomes limit as x approaches infinity of, again, on the inside, I get a 1 over x squared. Inside of the square root, the bottom is just 1 minus 8 over x. And then uh, this ends up being Uh, the square root of 2 minus 7 over x squared over 1 minus 8 over x. And now at this point, it is no longer indeterminate. And this gives me the square root of 2 over 1. So um, that's one of my limits. We now will consider the limit as x approaches negative infinity of the same function. You might think that the algebra is exactly the same. A lot of it is the same, but not all of it. Again, I will multiply by 1 over x over 1 over x. However, at this point, Oops, this should be a negative infinity. At this point, however, my denominator is just 1 minus 8 over x. Nothing changes there. However, the numerator, this is now the negative of 1 over x squared times 2x squared minus 7. When I bring this 1 over x on the inside, of the square root, it becomes the negative of 1 over x squared. I will explain why that is true in this case in just a minute. Let me finish the problem first. The rest of it is exactly the same as before with this negative on the outside. So we get then the negative of the square root of 2 minus 7 over x squared over 1 minus 8 over x. And in this case, this comes out to be the negative square root of 2. So, putting this together, the limit as x approached positive infinity for the function was the square root of 2. Because of that, that means that y equals the square root of 2 is a horizontal asymptote. Because the limit as x approaches negative infinity of the function was negative square root of 2, y equals the negative square root of 2 is also a horizontal asymptote. This function has two different horizontal asymptotes. Now, before I leave you for this, let me explain the algebra involved in that particular example. We have the limit as x approaches negative infinity of f of x. This means that x is less than 0. Now, the square root of x squared does not equal x. The square root of x squared is equal to the absolute value of x. Therefore, 
the square root of 1 over x squared is the absolute value of, well, which is the same as, and let me put in a step here, this is the square root of 1 over x quantity squared, which is equal to the absolute value of 1 over x. So if x is less than 0, the square root of 1 over x squared is the negative of 1 over x. Or, using this the way that I used it, since x was less than 0, one over x is equal to the negative of the square root of one over x squared. And that's why in that step I had to put a negative on the outside. Hopefully you understand the algebra.